Good morning, grade fours. Welcome to another natural science lesson. As you can see today, I've got a little assistant to help me teach your lesson. This is Pebbles. He is my African gray. He's about 14, 15 years old. And I brought him along today with, uh, to teach your lesson because he's going to help me in the content and the topic that we're going to learn about today. Remember that if you've got any questions throughout the lesson, please email them to grade 4 at worksheetcloud.com and I'm sure you are waiting in eager anticipation to see what we are going to learn. Let's see. So, as you can see, we are going to look at the structure of animals today. Um, on Friday, you learned about the structure of plants, and we spoke about the roots, the stem, the leaves, the flowers, and the seeds. I think I covered all of them. Yes. So, we spoke about the structure of plants, and so today we are going to be looking at the structure of animals and the different parts of an animal's body. So, let's have a look. Our objectives, we're going to start with the head, then the tail, then the body, the limbs, and finally we'll end off with the senses, and then do a little activity for all, all of you that you can do at home. Okay, so starting off. So, looking at just the basic structure of animals, and as I'm talking, I can hear him busy talking as well. Just be warned that if he does make a sound or he does whistle a little bit, it's okay. He also likes to get involved. So, as I said, we're going to look at the head. We're going to look at the tail, like this red tail over here on pebbles. We are going to look at the body. We are going to look at the limbs. We're going to look at the senses. So I've just put a little arrow here to show the ear of the elephant. But remember, our senses are our eyes, our nose, what we taste with our mouth, what we hear, and then obviously touch. So senses of animals. Right, let's kick it off and look at the head. So in most animals, the head has... Firstly, a brain or a brain-like structure. And remember, depending on the animals come in all shapes and sizes. And depending on the size of the animal, there is always a brain inside the head. Right, so you can see with this picture, we've got a big brain here that is us humans, then a chimpanzee, and then eventually it goes smaller and smaller depending on the size of the animal. If you have to look at Pebbles' head, Pebbles, come show everybody. Look how small his little head is. Can you imagine the size of his brain? Hey, Pebbles. Okay. Thanks, Pebbles. You're a great assistant today. Also, in the head, we have got our sensory organs from our ears to eyes and so on. So the sensory organs are there in the head and it is very important for the animal to perform certain functions and to sense the world around them. And lastly, feeding structures. So every animal has got a mouth of some kind, but we call it a feeding structure. So you can see with Pebbles, he's got a beak, um, we've got teeth. And so every animal is different in terms of their feeding structure. Okay, moving on, let's look at the tail of animals. So as you can see with this picture, we have got a variety of tails that belong to many different types of creatures. Uh, I'm sure you can possibly, let's see if we can identify some of these tails. So I would say that looks like a fox. Then that is an alligator of some kind. Then we have possibly a tiger tail. That could be a monkey's tail. Maybe a squirrel's tail over here. This could be a platypus maybe. Um, that looks like a horse's tail, a fish tail, a little piggy tail. This could be a dog's tail. So, oh, and, and the bird, a bird tail of some kind. So maybe you've got different, um, you've thought about different animals than me. It's always cool to see different tails. And again, they also come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. And we're going to look at the function of tails because animals use uh, their tails for various different functions depending on the animal. 
Okay, so let's have a look. So an animal can use a tail to move and swing in trees just like monkeys. So you can see in the picture that monkey is using his tail to move around um, and to swing around in, in, in a tree. Then animals sometimes can use their tail to kill prey. So uh, the example in the picture is a crocodile and a crocodile, funnily enough, actually when it when it has got its prey in its jaws, if it is still alive, it takes the prey underwater because it does want to drown the prey. And then it, with its tail, it sort of spins in the spinning motion um, and it's, it's to help him kill his prey and then eventually eat it. Right, then the tail also can be used for swimming, which we know that fish need tails to swim. They've also got fins to help them glide and steer, but tails are there for swimming. A lot of you, if some of you have ever put on flippers or fins when you've gone swimming, whether it's in the ocean or in your swimming pool, you know that your fins and your flippers do help you go a little bit faster. And so it is very good for swimming. Right, tails are also used for balance. So you can see what these, these two kangaroos look like they are having a bit of a fight about something, I don't know. And look at this kangaroo over here. He's actually using his tail. It's almost like he's using it like a pole to sit on. Um, and it's quite interesting how he's using it to, to balance his body. Then tails are also used to pat down uh, the earth. So you can see here, this is an otter and what they do is that they use it to pat down the earth um, when they make the little homes or you can see look at the the structure of this this tail it's thin it's thick it's almost like a bat kind of <laughs> Right, and then we have this little squirrel. Sometimes tails are used by animals to keep them warm. Now this squirrel actually wraps his body around in his tail to try and keep him warm like a blanket. Also the functions of a tail, we have such a, like a cow for example, or you have buck that use the tail like a bit of a fly swatter to chase away certain flies. We have tails like our dogs, where when they are so excited to see us, those tails sit and wag like they're gonna fall off. And so we can tell a lot about a dog's behavior just by looking at its tail. You can tell when a dog is excited, when it's angry. Um, you can tell a lot about a dog's behavior just by looking at its tail. Then we have also a tail used for protection. This is an armadillo and what it does is that it curls itself up in a little ball and the tail is also there to sort of protect its body and it's used for protection. And lastly, if any of you have seen those lizards that I spoke about in my previous lessons, so lizards, they've got a really good um, defensive strategy or mechanism is that they're able to distract predators by they actually drop their own tail um, and they are they do survive without their tail because amazingly enough those tails grow back and so they when they drop their tail off whether it's a bird or something a predator that was after him the predator is then focused on this wiggly tail um, and it's still wiggling because those muscles are still active in that tail and then that lizard is able to crawl away and get free. So very cool fact to know about lizards. Okay, let's look at the body. Now the body of different animals you have we talk about the outer coverings of body and they come again many shapes sizes colors textures as well so this is actually the skin of an octopus and you can see it is slimy it's moist it, it is looks more sort of smooth like uh, the color of it is is sort of a neutral color compared to a a crocodile or an alligator you can see that it the skin is very thick and it's tough and it's almost leathery um, and, and you can see if, if you can imagine feeling for some of you, maybe you have felt a crocodile or an alligator skin. It's very rough with these sort of jagged points over here, right? Different animals need to cover their bodies in different ways. And remember that animals need to cover their bodies in order to protect their insides, to protect their bodies um, and all their organs. Now let's have a look at the reasons specifically. 
So we said that the body coverings need to protect the animal's organs, bones and muscles from their environment and from germs and bacteria that might cause infection. Remember that our biggest organ of our body is actually our skin and our skin is our covering that we need in order to protect our not only our internal organs but it's also to um, almost act like a barrier so that we don't get germs and bacteria coming straight into our bodies. Um, yes, they can come in through our noses and our mouth and certain openings, but our bodies, our skin is to protect our bodies. Then secondly, animals also need to blend into their environment, either to hide from predators or camouflage themselves to stop prey from seeing them. So have a look at this lion over here. So a lion has a, is adapted um, to its environment by the color of its fur. So you can see its fur is the same color as the grass in the savanna. And what the reason behind it is so that when it starts to stalk its prey, the prey doesn't see it. And, um, and so it is there to blend into the environment. There are many animals that camouflage themselves into their environment, either for protection or to, um, if they are predators themselves and they are there to stalk their prey. And lastly, uh, the body of an animal sometimes is used to attract a female attention. So did you know that a peacock, this beautiful green peacock here in the corner is actually the male. So this particular, this peacock is the male and the female peacock is actually more brown and neutral and she's not as colorful and as beautiful as, as the, the male peacocks. And so some um, males and females look different uh, and, and the males sometimes are there to attract the, uh, the beautiful, the females just similarly like a lion. A lion has got a very thick mane, almost like a big beard, and they are there to also attract the females as well. So do you, do you see how bodies of animals can be used, are there for a particular reason? Every animal is, has been created in, in a certain way in order to adapt to its environment, to attract um, the opposite sex, or to just protect the animal from either the harsh environments um, or, protect it from, or protect its internal body uh, from, say, the outside world. Right. Okay, let's move on to limbs. So limbs, remember, can be your legs, it can be your arms, it can be the feet, um, the structures that bodies that animals use to either move around or to assist the body in some way. So Pebbles, you're getting caught in my hair. Let's show everybody your feet. So for those of you that can see Pebbles' feet, he has got claws on his feet. He's got these sort of scaly sort of feet. Um, don't worry, he's not biting. He's just giving a little nibble. And so his feet, um, his, his claws are used to sort of also move around. He uses his claws and his beak to move around because he doesn't have hands. So let's look at other animals and what they use their limbs for. Most animals use their, lives, their limbs to move. Animals can walk, run, climb or swim swim using their limbs. Some animals like chimps and squirrels can use their front and upper limbs to handle objects. So I must say he does the same. When I give him some food of some kind, he actually holds it in his one hand and, and has a nibble of it and then balances on the other hand. So it's quite interesting what he does with his limbs. Animals can have wings, they can have webbed feet, they can have tentacles, they can have fins, legs, arms, flippers, and long slithery bodies. So remember limbs for animals, again, they come in various shapes and sizes and animals use their limbs for different functions and different purposes, depending on the animal. Right, now we come to our senses. So remember I said that our senses are, our five senses is sight, smell, taste, hearing, and touch. Sight, smell, taste, hearing, touch. Just wanted to make sure that I mentioned all five, right? So some animals have senses that are much better developed than those of humans. For example, you can see the sniffer dog over here 
They are there to help people who are trapped under building rubble, mudslides or snow and tell the rescue workers where the victims are. These dogs also smell drugs or bombs and alert the police. So dogs have a very keen sense of smell and um, they can they are used and trained around the world for many of these purposes over here so dogs are really amazing i don't know about you but my dogs as well they can smell food from a mile away and they always come rushing in hoping to get a little treat of some kind Right, then we look at, if we look at certain birds, like eagles, buzzards, hawks and other birds of prey have extremely sharp eyes as they have to see small rodents from very far away. So their eyesight is absolutely amazing because remember, not only when they are perched high up in a tree or in a mountain, they actually look down and they see the little rodents and their prey down below so that they can get their next meal and then we have elephants cats and dogs can also hear sounds that human ears cannot if you can see here an elephant's ears are massive they're huge and they have got an amazing sense of hearing and they can hear sounds that de we definitely cannot hear and from a very far uh, a far distance as well we also have bats, dolphins, and some whales that use a special sense called echolocation. They send out special sound waves and can find prey or objects that might bump into from quite far away. So echolocation is they send these sound waves out and then it sort of bounces off that particular prey or that object or something. And then when it bounces off, it comes back to them and they're able to then judge the distance um, and where that prey particularly is. So it's very, very interesting. You should read up a little bit more about it because it's very, very cool. And then we also have butterflies, bees and earthworms that have another special sense called a chemoreceptor. And what they do is that they actually taste through their skin or their feet. Did you know that? Incredible, hey? Animals are incredible. I absolutely love watching Animal Planet and National Geographic and, and all of that, just to learn about your different types of animals. So if you are bored while you're at home and you don't even have things to do, watch animal documentaries. They're very interesting. And lastly, animals such as ants, cockroaches and crayfish also have special sense receptors that can send something moving from miles and miles away. So you can see, look at their sense receptors. Very, very cool. Right, so boys and girls, we have come to this part of the lesson where we're going to do a little bit of a labeling activity, and this should take you very quick. You can see here's two very simple pictures of animals. If you want to pause the video, and you can just sort of point out where you see the different parts of their body. Remember, we've looked at the head, the tail, the body, the limbs, and the different senses. So I hope that you are able to label them and if you've got animals at home, go to your animal, go to your pet, see what you can see, um, say to yourself, oh, what, what is the body's covering used for, what are the limbs used for, what are the, what is the head used for, the senses and so on. And so boys and girls, that brings me to the end of our lesson. Thank you very much for joining both of us and Pebbles, come and say goodbye stuck in my hair probably when you've got long hair so thank you very much for joining both of us i hope that you have a wonderful wonderful day and remember any questions email them to grade four at worksheetcloud.com have a wonderful day hakuna matata and be kind to one another from me and pebbles bye